Aquaba. Welcome back. If you are just now joining us, this is a very special program featuring my first in-studio guest, none other than Sherry Simmons. We have been talking about boundaries and education, and so we're gonna continue with this conversation. But Sherry, I want to mention something that you talked about in the last segment in terms of our experiences and the coping mechanisms. It has occurred to me for quite some time that our ancestors had to adopt values um, and behaviors that helped us to survive what I often say is, was the unsurvivable. That those coping mechanisms were necessary in order for us to even be here to this day. Um, and so when you understand that larger context, you can understand why it has taken so long really, for us to recover and put in healthy boundaries in relationships and to also minimize the white gaze. Um, du Bois talked about that 100 years ago, even when it dealt with literary works, that to be able to judge our own work from our own true perspective, not that double consciousness or white gaze, that that is when we can say that we've really moved forward. So would you speak to that a bit? Yeah, we are on our way with that. I, I know that, you know, it feels like we're not making progress sometimes, but we, we absolutely are. The fact that we have another uh, a number of like private individuals, smaller community individuals who are publishing their, their own works. We have more and more people who are willing to talk about their experiences, uh, particularly on the professional front. There was a period of time when you would never hear black professionals talking about some of the, the challenges that they face as they went out as highly educated, you know, black Bermudians. Uh, so that that is actually, it, it's coming around and we're feeling comfortable uh, with it. I do think though that we need to strengthen um, some of the protections for people, notwithstanding that we do have the Human Rights Commission and, and all of those things. But we know one of the unfortunate uh, happenings here in Bermuda is that people don't have confidence in the system to protect them. That That's if true. if they have an issue, particularly as a black Bermudian, you know, to go to the Human Rights Commission, they don't feel confident that anything will come out of it. And even if something does come out of it, they feel, oh, then I'm going to be blackballed. I'll never be able to work any place anymore. You know, because that I, was part of our experience, and as that well. was absolutely part of, and mm -hmm. and that's actually all true, and that is sometimes diminished as well. You'll often see that online. If if a black Bermudian talks about their experiences, you'll have a multitude of persons coming online saying, "Well, prove it," mm. or you know, "How do we know you're not?" you're not lying or how do we know right. you weren't in, in competent. Right. Um, I, I think that we need to, to be a little braver. I would say not only a little braver, I would even say moving forward yeah. that we need to be even a little more aggressive about yeah. protecting because the unfortunate thing is that black Bermudians are leaving this island like crazy. Um, and some of that is due to whether it's perceived or actual lack of opportunity in employment, especially when we go to places and we don't see black Bermudians being employed in positions where, you know, we either should be trained to be in those positions or uh, certainly apprenticed. I know my husband talks about that a lot, that yes. there used to be an apprentice because system. Because he would have come up in that. Yes, yeah, he did, yeah. uh, where you shadowed someone so that you could naturally come into the position. And that is not happening. Well, part of the reason why that's not happening, quite frankly, is because we as consumers allow it to not happen. So and what should we do? Uh, what what well, should we do? I mean, and, and we're going to spend some time talking about what we shall do, because that is part of the emphasis for season three, to talk about connections and actions, because we do a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we have to talk about what do we do? What are the actions that we should take yeah. to stem some of this? Are we really prepared to kind of put our money where our mouths are? Mm. And that's that that's always the question, because there are some things uh, that you should be ashamed of. There are some things that, that, you know, oftentimes people will say, oh, shame is a bad thing. Shame actually serves a purpose. It does. So what should we be to ashamed of? We should be ashamed of the fact that we will say we want Bermudians to have 
uh, particularly those jobs in the service areas. But when we go someplace and there are no Bermudians anywhere, we still lay our money down. Mm -hmm. So in other words, not um, participating economically yes. in places where we're not fully represented. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And saying we want that full representation, but not actually, you know, saying, oh, you know, something this can be, this needs to be dealt with. Right. And so that's on our part in terms of consumers and the average person who's going out and buying, you know, food at various places. But also there's a role of, of understanding that there is a moral obligation that persons who are the management and the ownership have. Because part of the reason why you see this influx of workers in these categories, and not just in Bermuda, but in other places as well, is because the human propensity of, quite frankly, exploiting people who are in desperate situations. Yes, yes. So again, if I say, and we encourage folks to say, don't spend your money where you're not represented, don't that per doesn't that person also need to speak to a manager and say, where are the yeah this is yeah this is why I'm taking this position that I that I'm taking yeah and there you you should be if you are if your business is reliant upon exploiting workers whether they are Bermudian workers whether they are non Bermudian workers it matters it matters not to me because at the end of the day I'm a child of workers no matter where I go. I could be on the planet Mars. I'm a worker. Mm -hmm. I am a labor person. Yes. That doesn't change regardless, even if my financial situation changes, even if my, you know, if, if my health changes, if my religion changes, anything. No, I am still a labor. Worker. I am mm -hmm. still a worker. And that's where we need to get to the point where we say to people, you ought to be ashamed of yourself that you are exploiting persons who are suffering economic, economically in their other, in, in their home country, so they have to leave their families. Mm -hmm. You know, they're working, if you look at some of the conditions that persons are working under in this country, it's, it's horrible. But we know who the owners are. We know right. who the managers are. Right. That's where we need to take a stance. Right. So what do you say to the person who says, but I'm just one individual trying to buy a hamburger? How is my little $10 going to affect this situation? What do we say to people who still see themselves not as part of a larger community that has power in our unity, but as an individual? I say harken back, and I know this is like back in the day, and a lot of people weren't even alive when this happened. It took two weeks to bring the theater down. Yes. It took two weeks. Yeah. All of two weeks. Yes. In fact, we don't even have to go that far. We can talk about the immigration fight where we yeah. had major crowds come out. But one of my um, criticisms is that we are still a crisis management people. When things come up to a boil, we will galvanize to action. But then when things kind of simmer down, we go back to our yes. spaces, yeah. to our business as usual. And the status quo knows that. So they may respond, you know, on the spot. But then as we creep back, the issue creeps forward yet again. How do we keep from just being um, reactive and being more proactive? Part of the reason why other communities can be proactive is because they, they have the space to be proactive. And what I mean by having the space to be proactive, one of the re being proactive and planning is really what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Planning, you have to be in the mental state to plan. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have the breathing room to plan. Mm -hmm. It's hard to have breathing room if I am struggling to find a job. It's hard to have breathing room if I can't afford insurance, which un more and more people now That's right. are either not insured at all or, or under, underinsured. Or underinsured. Mm -hmm. Now I say all that to say this, this doesn't absolve people of personal responsibility because you know, folks always say, oh, you, got, you always have the choice. But my point is this, if I don't have to worry about employment, if I don't have to worry about struggling to pay my Belco bill or you're struggling to buy groceries, it leaves me with the breathing room to be able to think about my future. 
it leaves me with the breathing room to be able to think of a better future for my child, mm -hmm. a better future for my community. So therefore, I can start thinking about, well, what do we want to do in five years? Or what, right. do, you know, or where do we want to, where do we want to go? Right. But what responsibility do our own institutions have in forwarding those conversations. I'm talking about our churches, I'm talking about our sports clubs, I mean because we are well entertained people. Even in the midst of having um, deficiencies, we still manage to be well entertained. And sometimes when I look at young people who may have, uh, you know, kind of a basic job, but they're, they're decked out, you know, with the nails and the clothes and the sneakers, or a carnival just happened. I mean, I am shocked to know how much some feathers might cost that we are all decked up in. How do we change the mentality to put not only our mental energy but our resources towards that because it is good to say and it's very valid to say I need the space to in order to plan and to think about my future but if I'm always kind of self-medicating with with the party and mm -hmm. with the all the other stuff that entertains us how do we break that cycle because if we tell the truth our ancestors, and I'm not necessarily talking about way back in the day, I might be just talking about our parents or grandparents, yes, yeah. did more with less in terms of forwarding progress for our people. So how do we interrupt some of these cycles? Well, we have to, it's not either or. Well, now that's I, true. Yeah, and, and, and what I mean by that either or is we may have gone too far to the I'm not going to worry about my problems or I'm going to, you know, on the weekend, I'm going to go out and, you know, do this or do that. We have to strike the balance. Tim Keller, who just recently passed away, who was a who's a Presbyterian. He was a Presbyterian minister in the United States. And if you look at my library, I've got like all of his writings. I'm such a respecter of what he says. And he, he often used to say in his sermons that your future, what you do today, depends on the degree of where you think you're going. Mm -hmm. So if you feel you don't have any future, then, then you you're going to conduct yourself in a way today that has no regard for, for the future. For the future. Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say this, that if you believe that life is a stress and so you gotta kinda live it up right now, get while the getting is good, as that old expression used to be, you're gonna engage in, in, in those types of behaviors. So what we need to do is, is remind our people that there's a balance. And I agree that, that some of our organizations have quite frankly been derelict in, in educating our, our people in terms of what it means to strike that balance, mm -hmm. what it means to be able to sit down and say, what do I want my family to look like? Yes. What do I want, you know, my community what to look my like. community to look like? Mm -hmm. Because it does start, it does start with the family. Yeah. Because if you have an unhealthy family, you are going to have, by extension, an unhealthy community. Absolutely, that is and correct. It, and it starts, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge proponent of having wraparound services for our community in particular. What does that mean? And, and what I mean by wraparound services, that if we know that uh, that children that are, are coming from a certain background are less likely to go to college or, or you know more likely to engage in certain behaviors. We have the ACEs, as you know, when you, when you look at, at the data, that if there are certain experiences that people have in childhood, if you have five or more of those experiences, you know that your chances of being involved in uh, gangs, drugs, drugs the rest. That mm -hmm. increase exponentially. Yes. And because we know that, Lord knows we've got enough research on it now. I mean, we, we don't need to do any more. That's, that's you what know. I said, all the talking. Yeah. What we do don't we need do? Any, need to, we need to say, because we know that this is going to be an issue, that at every level we need to provide services for those families and able to, so we can undergird them to give them the best possible chance to become healthy. Because I'm a firm believer that wherever there's life, there's hope. Yes. I, I really believe that. Yes. And the same way, and when people say, oh, you can't, you know, spoon feed people. That's often when, when I talk about having this level of services for persons who historically have had challenges. Yes. People, oh, yeah. And I say, is that, that spoon feeding? And they'll say, yes, it's spoon feeding. So tell me, 
Which when the Bermuda government sets up a specific section of government that deals with incorporating companies here in Bermuda, and they have they lay out the red carpet and they do all of the paperwork for them and they provide everything. It's a one stop shop. Right. Like if I want to set up a company in Bermuda, I can you know I go to this section and they say here's what you need here da da right. da. We are concierge service. Is that food Is that feeding? Food speed? Yeah. Spoon feeding? No, it's absolutely not. Now, I want to be very clear, I don't have an issue with that happening. I am just using it as an example right. how it can be done because it's done for other sectors. That's so if right. you can do it for other sectors, you would then need you certainly, to do it. You, you need to do it for, for your us. people. Yes. You really need to do it for your people. America's Cup is another example of that. Yes. America's Cup, and I will forever, as long as there is breath in me, remind people that that is a, a great example of legislation that was designed to ensure that anything short of an act of God, that was going to be successful. Right. Right. It would have had to have been an right. act of God, a hurricane or something of that nature coming through for that not to... Every contingency was put into that. Every, you know, all of the stops were pulled out to make sure that that was a successful event, that the promoters were able to get what they needed. And, and, and again, rightly so. I take no issue with that. What I'm saying that if you can design legislation that guarantees the success of millionaires and billionaires, there is no reason why you cannot design legislation that undergirds people who, who need the help. Who need the help. Yes. If we can do it for millionaires and billionaires, we, should we can do it do for it. working class people. Yes. And we need and that's, to. And that's what I'm talking about when mm -hmm. I talk about wraparound wrap around. services. Mm -hmm. And that's what needs to be done to, and there will always be people who, you know, still have their challenges. That's, you know. Well, what, even the Bible says the poor will always be with us. But that doesn't mean yeah. that we don't assist and try to um, yeah. raise folks up because nobody really wants to be in a destitute situation. I mean, mental illness aside, yes. most people, uh, I often say, nobody's born saying, I want to be incarcerated when I grow up. I want to live on the street when I grow up. Nobody is born saying that. Everybody has aspiration and, and dreams that somehow get dashed. And just as you spoke of, we, we know that there are certain variables that places your life chances in a negative lane how do and since we know that how do we intervene yeah and yes. that's and that's and that's what i'm talking about and i'm glad that you mentioned that you know, the passage in the bible said the poor will always be with us we need to stop using that as an excuse to be unsympathetic towards our fellow absolute human beings absolutely we, that is really just an excuse Oftentimes, I, when yes. people, when I hear that, yes. because it generally is coming from people who are, are not poor, who are not poor, <laughs> or who really don't have empathy, who lack empathy. Yes. And, you know, no. Well, okay, even, oh, oh, let's say, okay, fine, you believe that. Say, you honestly, earnestly believe that the poor will always be amongst us. That's fine. Okay, so since we're talking about the Bible, you were well, we're not talking about the Bible, but well, you know, it, well, for <laughs> folks who use that quote, I'm talking yes. that specific uh, passage that that folks will often refer to as to why, oh well, there's nothing you can really do about some of the social issues that are mm -hmm. that are happening in the country. Well, we're also commanded to do for That's people right. Feed who are the hungry, poor, the hungry, you know, clothe the naked. Get, we are we are commanded to do that. So yes. if you you know, come yes. on. If, we're, if you're going to do that, if you're going right. to do that, let's well, let, let's do it. I like the Yorba saying that says that human beings, humans, were made to bring good into the world and let none of the good be lost. And we see so much good being lost. We'll be right back. 